Dear friends, uh, welcome to this uh, session of YouTube Live with Talent Sprint. Uh, really happy to welcome all of you to this program on fintech and blockchain that we're launching now. I'm delighted to have uh, with me uh, two very uh, eminent people. We have uh, to my right, Samir Singh Jaini, and we have uh, Ritesh Modi, two leading experts in the field of fintech and blockchain who are joining us for this session. So thank you guys for coming, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a great session over the next one hour. Right? Absolutely. I'm sure the people on the uh, other side who are watching this will be curious to know a lot about this program. So it's my intent um, uh -huh. to start this off with a bit of an introduction to the field of blockchain and fintech that I'm sure all of you would appreciate. Let me therefore uh, get a few slides out of the way because all of you on the audience uh, might appreciate a bit of a perspective on this program. Let me do that quickly and I promise you we'll go to the Q&A very, very quickly after this. So the question that we're posing is fintech and blockchain, is this a career opportunity or is it a threat? And I, I think you all believe that it's both, oh, yeah. right? It's a huge opportunity and it's a huge threat as well for all of us. Not just for individuals, it's an opportunity and threat for companies, startups, business models. Things are being disrupted in a very big way thanks right. to these technologies, right? right? Well, the interesting feature of this program is that unlike our past programs, we normally partner with a very advanced academic institution like an AI machine learning, it's with IIIT Hyderabad. This one was a rare one where we had to go and find industry partners because I can't think of a single academic institution in the world today which has even the expertise to teach blockchain and fintech because everything's in the cutting edge right now, right? right. So everything is at a point where we are pre-explosion and the amount of time required for an academic curriculum to be built has even not been given. So this is the chance to build something with industry. So you see the partners we have, Ripple, PayPal, which are two global leaders. Ripple, as you know, cryptocurrency and blockchain, they're the world leader. PayPal in the world's most famous, most highly valued, uh, you know, I would say digital payments company. Paytm needs no introduction. I'm sure all of us pay a lot of our bills on a daily basis through Paytm. ICICI Bank, one of the more advanced techn technologically savvy banks in the country. And finally, India Angel Network, whose interest in this program is actually not just to get talent, but to find new entrepreneurs. Yeah, uh, you know, we believe that these fields will offer a lot of new entrepreneurship opportunities. And some of the people in this program that we expect to join, uh, and we already have you know, people enrolled who are in this category, mm -hmm. who are entrepreneurs who have just started new companies or are thinking of starting new companies. So if this program can provide them both the skill sets mm -hmm. and the access to capital through angel networks, so that would be a phenomenal value add for people. So that was the reason for us to have this, uh, have this com combination of partners. So if you really look at it, um, you know, uh, there's this old saying by Mark Andreessen that, uh, you know, uh, software is eating the world. I'm sure many of you have heard this. It's really a message about disruption, how almost every field, whether it is books, whether it's consumer electronics, whether it is groceries, whether it's transportation, whether it's communications, in the last 10, 20 years, we have seen them significantly getting transformed. You know, 200-year-old companies are being replaced by software companies in a matter of one decade, yeah. right? I think the same exact thing is happening with financial services right now. If you are working in an IT services company in the BFSI uh, division and you are uh, servicing a bank in Europe or a bank in the US or in Australia sitting out of India, whether it's Bangalore or Hyderabad or Mumbai or Gurgaon, the fact of the matter is that all of the customers that you're servicing today are themselves reinventing themselves with blockchain and fintech. So in a matter of three, four years, we fully expect that technology-driven financial services will drive the world. And that's an example of how all the other industries that have gone the software way, mm -hmm. financial services have become a software business, actually, the way things are evolving. Of course, uh, you know, Bill Gates is known for many things, and one of the things he said in 1994, which I think is quite uh, extremely foresightful, is that, you know, he said that, uh, this is 25 years ago, he said, we need banking, but it's not clear that we need banks. And I think we have seen that now. I don't, can't th think of the last time I went to a bank branch. Right? Mm -hmm. So for me, a bank is an app. Mm -hmm. or at best an ATM. It's nothing more than that. The right. checkbook really is gone. Um, you know, branch banking is gone for most of us. So therefore, you can already see the dematerialization or the softwareization of the bank has already happened. Yes. And that's really what is currently going on. And I think in the future, very new future, perhaps already happening, you can get a loan through an app and you're already getting those. Fintech has been disrupted. I won't spend any more time on this anymore. But I think the whole sector of fintech has... A big category on payments, digital payments, mm -hmm. uh, and UPI, Unified Payment Interface. India is the world leader now. Mm -hmm. People are coming to India to learn about payment, Agreed. digital payments. For example, WhatsApp and Google Pays. You know, never have you seen Silicon Valley companies <laughs> saying an Indian API is what we should use to build up learning our learning from right? us. Yeah, learning from us. So we have those examples. I'll keep going. Overall, short. The, sh the long story short, 
the fintech market globally is exploding either in digital payments or digital lending or in some form of other kinds of aspects of it which we'll I'm sure surely we'll discuss in our uh, discussion going forward so what is the real story here the global fintech landscape appears to us at least the analysis that we have done there are 1000 plus fintech companies in the world today which have attracted more than 100 billion dollars of funding uh, created close to a trillion dollars of uh, market capitalization value and this whole thing is doubling every 18 months mm -hmm. which is an enormous story which means that if you use the same numbers for the next 5 to 10 years this is going to be one of the dominant industries in the world. India, like we said before, is in a great position because India is seen as a global leader in fintech. Uh, that's the good news uh, because worldwide, whether it's Google or WhatsApp or you know uh, Samsung or uh, Apple or Amazon, the payment leaders, they have accepted the unified payment interface that has come out of the NPCI uh, stable in India as one of the great stories along with Aadhaar stack and all of that EKYC. UPI transactions, I think post demonetization on November 8, 2016, we have seen a huge upsurge. You might remember the big ad by Paytm taken out the day after demonetization saying that thank you Prime Minister for making the company's yeah. payments digital. So those are the major, I think, policy thrusts, government thrusts that have made Indian fintech such a worldwide uh, phenomenon. The good news is that we are a world leader. The bad news is that very few people are actually driving that phenomenon globally. The rest of us, I think, need to really catch up and become part of that global phenomenon. It's an expertise today limited to a small number of people. I agree. And the goal of our program is to expand that expertise, include many more people into it. Um, simple example of, well, we call this, you know, there's a whole story of saying, you know, we did B2B, we do B2C, but I think we are going to have B2 citizens. So if you look at the national electronic toll system that's coming up, we will have electronic toll in this country to the point where cash-based toll payments will just stop after the next three, four, five years. That's a citizen scale example of a fintech solution at work, right? And that's coming in India. It's called the ETC, Electronic mm -hmm. Toll Collection System. Meanwhile, while fintech keeps advancing and keep eating into the banking and financial sectors, the other dark horse in the story is blockchain. And Ritesh is already smiling. So I think we have read more about blockchain in the last six months than we've read in the entire lives, right? And uh, I think the only other uh, big tidal wave of PR and meat marketing hype that we've seen around the world are then blockchain must be machine learning. I mean, you take these two things, I think the entire media of the world, from Forbes to Fortune to Times of India to Economic Times, everybody's telling the same story of either stories about machine learning taking over the world or it's about blockchain taking over the world. Right. And I think the answer to both of them is yes and yes, right? It's not, it's not either or, it's yes and yes. Both are going to be really, really big. There are many uses of blockchain, I don't have time to go into it, but uh, this picture is about that, that there is this huge, you know, uh, thing going on. It started with cryptocurrency, but now blockchain is about many, many other things like global money transfer. It's about uh, whether Swift will survive, whether it will become completely blockchain driven and so forth. So there's a whole sort of things that are coming with this land records. There is no application in the world that uses data and records which does not need blockchain. I think that's one way to look at it because wherever you have a database based application that has what we call time series data or we call it longitudinal data over time uh, or version control of data, I think blockchain is critical for that application to become much more advanced. <coughs> the other good news, I think these are markets that are creating a really large number of uh, high quality jobs. Uh, I think the current data that I saw last couple of days is that uh, blockchain is now the second most aspirational and second most uh, explosive job category in the it world. Is. In yes. terms of job postings that you see, blockchain jobs are growing at a, I think, enormous pace. It's grown three times in the last 12 months. It used to be, I think, some X, now it's 3X, uh, and salary premiums are going along with it. So we're not just talking about great cutting-edge technology, we are talking about great cutting-edge technology leading to high-quality yes. jobs and careers going forward. So I will end my you know, introductory uh, pitch there, guys, because I think I've spoken enough. 